At 87, Dr. Salim Ali is the grand old man of Indian ornithology. His career spans over half a century. Salim Ali has done more than anyone living to set the study of India's bird life on a scientific footing, and more too, to save the country's wild places. From the Himalayas to Cape Comorin, from the Great Ran to the marshes of Bharatpur, in more senses than one, all is Salim Ali's India. Place. They have had a nest there, for... Which one? which one is this? Uh, last year I didn't see them, but uh, I see. usually it has it. Um, that. What were you saying about the this, weaver birds? This typha grass has grown recently and uh, black-throated weaver, weavers nested last is year. Is that so? Yes. But this year? This year we haven't seen. Not for the bird watcher, India is a paradise. In the 3,000 kilometers from north to south, as much as from London to the central Sahara, there's every kind of country, from frozen peak to humid forest, baking desert to watery swamp. And there are birds, some 2,000 species. Many live here all the year, but in winter, migrants come in from the north. Such comings and goings pass largely unnoticed, though not when Salim Ali's around. There are a lot of coats here. Dr. Ripley was telling me that in some places they have found that where coats uh, collect, that is a sort of, uh, it is unsuitable for ducks. Yeah. And also the depth of water, the coats need a bit of water to dive. Yes, in. yes, yes. yes. It's largely through Salim Ali's inspiration that other people now think India's natural history a proper subject for study and inquiry. But uh, Belinda says she saw seven. Yes. So that uh, the dancer over there, sitting on the stump. He lives in Bombay, a raucous modern city, shrill with the bustle of commerce. <laughs> The city is home, too, to the Bombay Natural History Society, and Salim Ali's its president. He's been involved with it for much of his and its life. He still goes twice a week to the society's offices, adjoining the elegant Prince of Wales Museum. Founded in September 1883, it's a national society despite its name. It's among the most respected of its kind in Asia. Members are drawn from all over India and from overseas. 
They have access not only to an historic collection of specimens, but can use this extensive library. They started their own journal in 1886, and in its pages there's not only a fund of original observations, but a social history from a natural history point of view. The first issue records the Society's founding by seven gentlemen interested in natural history who proposed to meet monthly, exchange notes, exhibit interesting specimens and otherwise encourage one another.